Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a dog's tongue in pastels. Now for this I've taken the section of a black Labrador drawing that I did last year and I decided to work just with my pastel pencils for this. Now what I want to be doing here to start with, just like when I work with my pan pastels, is I'm just hinting at where my main lights and darks are. So I'm going to be using a combination of pinks, darker reds and some purples to really hint at where the colours become warmer and cooler. Now the lighting is something that I talk about in all of my tutorials but when you're working with something that has a wetter appearance like noses, tongues and the gum area, the lighting is going to be potentially more extreme where that wet surface is reflecting more of the light. But before I can get onto my brightest highlights, I need to be getting that base foundation in place. So here I'm hinting at that darker shadow at the back of the tongue, where obviously the top section of the mouth is cast in that shadow. This is going to help to build up more of that depth and three dimensional feel to the entire portrait. Now if the shadow here is not as dark as it should be, then it's not going to have the appearance that it's part of the dog, which is obviously a real problem. So this is one of those areas where we do really want to focus on that reference photo. Now of course the shadow here and the highlights are going to vary depending on the reference photo and the light source. So this is just something that we have to study from each individual portrait that we're working on. Now as I continue to layer my pencils here, this is where I'm starting to pick where I'm seeing more of a pink, red, maybe some more of those purples. But I'm not trying to mix the exact colour at this stage. Now this is something that I'm asked very frequently and it's why I focus my real-time tutorials on Patreon more about the values and then how to pick those pencils based on that. So there is a very simple system that I like to use using a colour wheel. It doesn't go into any complex colour theory, it's just a simple way that I like to use to pinpoint which pencils I want to be using. And when I worked on the base layer of the tongue here, I'm only focusing on the values. Do I need a darker pink? Do I need something that's a little bit lighter? Because as I build up my layers here, I can adjust the colour of the tongue as I go. But the layers, the values, the contrast is something that's going to have more of an impact overall. Going back to what I've mentioned about the lighting, if I don't have the darks at the back of the tongue as dark as what I have here, and eventually I don't build my highlights up so they are bright enough, this tongue is going to look very flat and two-dimensional. Quickly talking about the fur here and how the shine on the black fur, that there looks realistic, not because I've got loads of details, but it's because I've got my values right. I've got the darkest parts of the fur really dark and then I've built up my highlights from there. So in terms of the pencil technique that I'm using for the tongue, it's the same, I'm just using more of a broader movement with my pencils because of course I'm not trying to build up fur texture here. Now when I'm using the side of the pencils, this is just so I can get a little bit more of a quicker, even coverage. When I come back in and put in my highlights on top, I'm now starting to be a little bit more precise as where I'm seeing those in my reference photo. Now the other thing that I do like to do is I move my pencil following the direction of the highlights and shadows. So when we build up more of the texture of this tongue later on in this video, that's when you're going to really see where I'm moving that pencil and why from this first early stage I'm still using that movement of the details to show me where I should be directing my pencil strokes. Now of course this isn't as important for working on a smoother surface like a tongue but I do feel that by moving my pencils in the way that that tongue is now hanging over the teeth on the front part of the mouth that that's already starting to build up more of a shape in that area of the portrait. If I was just to move my pencils back and forth in random movements, I do just feel that I don't quite study that reference photo as accurately as I currently am here. Now the one thing that you'll notice here is that I'm working on small sections and I'm actually getting this area of the tongue about 60-70% complete and then I'll move on to the next. Now if I was working on a tongue that was smaller, so maybe wasn't quite sticking out of the mouth as much as this is, then I would work on whole layers. So I would do my base layer, then I'd do the next layer and so on. But this tongue was quite large, so I felt that I wanted to break this up into manageable chunks so that it was easier, less stressful, less overwhelming to work on. 
Now, one of those questions that I then get asked is, well, how do you color match if you're working on two separate sections? Now, what I've got here is the pencils that I'm using, they are either in my left hand or they're on a little shelf in front of me just below my easel. So I'm not having to sit there rummaging through all of my pencils. I know what pencils are used on the left side of the tongue and I've got those in front of me. But in terms of colour matching, for something like this, it's not really what we want to do. As I build up more of this area here, you can see that this side of the tongue is going to end up being far more lighter than the left. So although I'm using the same pencils, I'm going to be using more of my lighter pinks and more of a thicker layer of pastel to get that light value on this side. This is going to help for me to follow that reference photo and the light source. But therefore, because there is a difference in value here, I don't have to worry about colour matching. Because if I do colour match to this exactly, then I'm going to end up with a tongue that looks flat. Now the other thing as well is, depending on the light source, I have done many portraits where the tongue actually contains some purples on one side of the tongue and then the other is far more of the pinks and the reds. So it very much is going to vary. We don't want to be just thinking, well, it's the one tongue on that animal, therefore all of the colours are going to be the same all over, because that's really not the case. If there's a strong shadow that's being cast across the dog's face, you are potentially going to be using very different colours at the back of the tongue or over onto one side, for example. So here, now that the end of the tongue is a little darker, this is where I'm going to be using more of my dark to light techniques. So I'm using some of those darker reds, that pink tint, and then I'm now lightening it up as I go. Now the wonderful thing with pastels is they are really flexible, so predominantly I will work from dark to light, but there are situations where if I've got a particularly bright part of the tongue, I'll work with a highlight first, and then I'll put my darker layers on top. So if you do have a really strong bright highlight, you don't have to put a pink down, you could always start with white and then tone it down with your pinks later on. Now when I start to build in the texture, look at how I'm following the curve of the tongue. All of this is very important because it makes that tongue look like it's three dimensional and again it's curving over the front section of the mouth. So I don't want to be moving my pencil strokes randomly, I again am following that reference photo really closely. Now something that I focus my real-time tutorials on in my Patreon tutorials is pencil technique. This is so important in terms of how we hold the pencil, how we move the pencil, the amount of pressure that we apply and so on. I want to be making sure here that I am adjusting my pencil technique so that this looks like skin and when I build up the textures on the tongue that that doesn't look like fur. So here I want to be making sure that I have got that variation in place to again build in more of that realism to the overall portrait. Because of course the one thing we want to avoid here is that the tongue does not look like it contains fur, which obviously would be a real problem. So that is something that I'm always looking to adjust when I'm working on different textures. So the other aspect that I focus my real-time tutorials on Patreon is the layering process. Now as I've got more of this tongue drawn in, you can see how important all of these layers have been. If I was to jump in with my brightest highlights first, then all of this tongue is not going to have the depth, it's not going to have that subtle, almost like a, a softness to it. Now some tongues are going to have more of a texture, you're going to have ridges and some grooves, that there you do want to capture. But for something like this, the importance of the layering process is going to help to build up that smoother looking layer. So I don't want to be jumping to those bright highlights because I will end up making the tongue look a little bit more harsh. Now obviously as I say, if you've got something that looks more textured, then your highlights and shadows are going to be more extreme. But this is something that is going to be very individual to each reference photo. And again, look at how I'm directing my highlights. They're starting to curve, change direction, following the anatomy and structure of that tongue. Now I've got a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels, I'll link that in the description below. Now of course this is not fur, but the pencil technique would be the same. We're focusing on three things, the way that the highlights and shadows are directed, so therefore the fur direction, the length of the pencil strokes depending on how textured this tongue would be, and then also the thickness of those same grooves. So all of those three things here that I do speak about in that video, although it's relating to fur, it can be transferred to any other element. 
I'm still wanting to be making sure that I'm capturing any movement. So that's where you want to be directing that pencil in the accurate way. And then the thickness of those pencil strokes can be determined by a couple of things. How sharp your lead is on your pencil, the amount of pressure that you apply, and also how you move that pencil. So if you were to create a really sharp point, but then not move the pencil in the right way with the right amount of pressure, you still might potentially end up with a thicker looking line. So the way that we are going to be using the pencil is going to make a huge difference to what that pencil can do. So it's at this stage here where I'm just starting to adjust the colour ever so slightly. It looked like in some places there was a little bit of a purple tint and just bringing that colour down on the cooler end of the colour wheel. So I'm using here my Caran d'Ache Light Ultramarine Violet just to put that light layer of purple over the top. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I do also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you do have any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.